Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler here. Um, welcome back to the Svelte tutorial series. In the previous episode, we talked about reactive buttons, text, event handlers, as well as event uh, modifiers. If you missed that video, I highly suggest you check it out. But in today's video, we're going to be talking about data binding as well as reactivity. So uh, let's get started. To demonstrate both of these foundational topics of Svelte uh, in the same video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an input field um, first. So what we want to do is have a input field that updates this first name variable whenever we type in it. For example, it's going to have a placeholder of first, first name. And then I'm just going to copy this real quick. Holy cow, there we go. Uh, okay, I didn't copy it apparently, but that's fine. Inputs, type of text, and placeholder is going to be last name here. And what I want to happen is when I type in these fields, it'll update the first name and last name. And to show our progress, uh, I'm going to add a h1 and I'm going to do first is equal to first name. We'll have an h1 for last name. And this will just say last name. And so I'm going to add a line break and then we'll add a text for our full name. And we'll do full name is equal to um, full name. And before I show you reactivity, I'm going to just create a variable called full name and set it equal to first name plus last name. And you might think this would work, but what you'll quickly see is it doesn't. So when I update this first name text, I want it to show uh, the first value. So how do we do that? Well, there's multiple ways of doing this. We can naively just create an event listener that listens for on input and then update the value. But Svelte has us covered with a bind operator. So just like you can do on click and all that kind of stuff, you can also do a bind operator, which allows you to do bind and then semicolon and then type in value. And what happens is when you pass in the value you want to bind, whenever the value changes or the input changes, all associated binds will also change. So let me actually show you what this means. We can type in first name here with our binds. And what happens is if I type, I can say Tyler, you can see as I type in real time, the value will update here. So let's add this to the last name bind as well. So we can do bind value and then pass in last name. Okay, perfect. So now if I type in John Doe, we got the first two fields showing the correct information. But if you've noticed, the full name field isn't showing John Doe, which you may be like, hmm, I typed it incorrectly. Full name is equal to first name plus last name. That's so weird, right? Well, yeah, the, you may expect this to work, but you gotta remember, we're saying full name is equal to the value of first name at this current instant, which is a empty brackets, in the value of last name, which again is an empty string. So we're basically saying full name is equal to empty string plus empty string. So how do we make this reactive? Where when one of these changes, the whole entire variable will also update, which means it'll also force an update here. Um, well, to do that, we actually can just simply do this, dollar sign, semicolon. And just like that, this weird syntax, which I'll explain in a second, now we'll let this value update when these two values change. For example, I can type in Tyler and then I can type in, or I can say like John, John, and then Doe, John Doe. And you can see it has a space, but it's updating. Isn't that great? We can do John space Doe, or if we really wanted to, we'd probably just do something like this. There we go. So we can update the values in real time. Now, you may be wondering, what does this dollar sign semicolon mean? Is that even valid JavaScript? Well, it turns out it actually is. Uh, this is valid. And since Svelte is a compiler, you don't really have to worry about it being totally valid. Like, they can just say, okay, this is a reactive statement before they compile it. So, um, what else can you do with reactive statements? You may be like, well, okay, that's cool and all, but what else can I do with this? Well, you can do something like this, where I have dollar sign semicolon, and I can just do console.log uh, full name. Okay. So what's going to happen here 
is it's going to run this expression um, every single time the value here changes or any other value that we depend on. But in this case, it's just full name. For example, if I do control shift I to open up the developer tools and then start typing, we can see Tyler is now updating over here. And what's happening is we're running this function every time full name changes. If this was just last name, for example, and again, I type in Tyler here, you can see that it's not updating. And it's because it's only dependent on last name. If this is last name and then semicolon first name, right? Well, what you'd see is it doesn't matter which one is typed, right? So that is reactivity in a nutshell. But there's actually a couple cool things we could do with reactivity. You may be like, okay, that's kind of cool, right? Like I can, I can use reactive statements. I can update my UI. But you can also execute more than one line of code with reactive statements. For example, I can do something like a block, which is just a statement. This is valid JavaScript. And in here, I can do if, um, oh, I didn't mean to open Visual Studio. Oops, there we go. If uh, full name, oh no, we can do if first name dot length is equal to zero and uh, last name dot length is equal to zero. We can just say console dot log not valid length. Perfect. And now you can see hello is only getting outputted when one of these is true. If I save this to or, uh, there we go. What you'll see now is it'll run when one of these is true. So we can say hello. And then second I put something here, it changes. You can also do something like this. You can just do an expression just like this. Again, it only mo uh, worries about an expression and this is a valid JavaScript uh, expression slash statement. So we can do if uh, first name, or no, we can do full name, full name dot length is greater than five. We can just say alerts large full name and instead of doing larger than five we'll do larger than ten so for example something like john doe is not a very large thing so instead if we have john and then add a couple characters you can see we get our alerts and that is reactive statements as you can see they're pretty useful we can dynamically run functions or statements or anything in between we could also change text dynamically, and I showed you how to use the bind operator to bind a input field with a value, and vice versa. So if you found this video useful, please like, comment, subscribe, leave a suggestion down below if you're interested in more types of tutorials like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.